Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTE 214. This is week four uh, assignment. And for this week, we're going to be doing a video on the complete disassembly, the uh, polishing of the feed ramp. We're going to go over um, the cleaning procedures. We're going to talk about uh, how to educate customers on uh, ammunition induced malfunctions. And we're going to talk about training customers in the proper grip and stance. And finally, we're going to describe why it's important to understand the firearm uh, and accessory operation prior to attaching any accessories to the firearm. Um, there's a lot to fit in this video, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks. <laughs> today so it's mostly just dirty I'll clean it here in a second there's some solvent yeah you can see there's a little bit of nicking and whatever but it wasn't too bad and I didn't have a single miscue or misfire or anything so I'm gonna skip right ahead to the 1500 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to try and buff this out a little bit. I didn't do the 400 grit because, like I said, it worked great as it was. So you want to make sure that your tolerance here is 0 0.032 between the barrel and the feed ramp. All right, now I've got my rotary tool. I'm going to put some of the polishing compound on it. Make sure to cover the entire part of the buffing pad with the compound and also put some where you're going to buff as well. Just like the lecture this week said, don't go overboard. Um, my rotary tool I can control with a foot pedal. So I'm just using it at real low speed and just kind of going over the spot that I want to buff and shine up. If you don't have one of these rotary tools, you should get one. They're at Harbor Freight. They're like 50 bucks or something like that. See, it looks way better, like a mirror finish. The reason we do this is to make sure that when our ammunition is being fed into the barrel, that it has a smooth ramp and doesn't cause any failures to feed. So you can see that barrel was pretty dirty. Everything's pretty dirty. I used a assortment of questionable ammo. Right here, you can use, see I'm using a sonic cleaner. I'm using Hornady's solution. Uh, for cleaning gun parts and I'm scrubbing the whole thing down with the solvent basically just getting everything and cleaning it So you can see right there how dry it looks. It doesn't have any oil, how much cleaner the barrel is on the inside. After you've got everything cleaned, you're gonna soak the whole thing down in oil, let it sit for just a little bit, and then wipe it off with a cotton shirt. That will make sure that uh, you leave kind of a micro layer of oil over the whole firearm. When we're looking at the ammunition, when we're trying to spot ammunition-induced malfunctions, we're looking for those telltale issues, such as protruding primers, popped primers, swollen shells, cracked shells, things like that. But we're also looking at the shooter. Are they using reloaded ammunition? Are they using steel jacketed ammunition? 
Certain ammunition will cause malfunctions in the firearm and we want to avoid those. It also, if our chamber is swollen because we you know, ground away too much when we were trying to buff it or whatever, that can cause issues. It's really important with the 1911 and, and with other firearms that we don't get like a limp wrist syndrome where we're holding on to it and we're not allowing the physics of the firearm to, to, to function properly. Um, if you limp wrist your firearm and you're holding on to it, you can cause failure to feed, failure to fire, failure to eject. Uh, you really need to have a solid stance. If somebody brings you in a firearm and they're claiming that these are the problems, going over the stance, going over the grip might help you, to, uh, you and the customer. When we add accessories to a firearm, it changes the mass of the slide or the mass of the action. And, and by doing that, we can cause problems with the way that it functions. Modern day firearms are meant to be optics ready, whereas the 1911, adding something like a flashlight or adding something like an optic without adjusting the recoil spring could cause issues. All right, that concludes my video for this week. We are back fully functioning 1911. In fact, if anything, it functions better than it did before. Um, it is clean as a whistle and uh, we put our 250 rounds through it. So hopefully we will move forward with upgrading this pistol in the future. Thanks, have a good day.